Yeah, Governor Snyder established the Michigan Office for New Americans in 2014 and uh, declared June as uh, Immigrant Heritage Month this year. Uh, what steps would you take to attract more people uh, to come to Michigan, given that we might lose a congressional seat because of population decline? Yeah, you know, ta attraction of, of talent in from around the country, around the world, is um, it's been just part of what has made America, or both America, but especially Michigan, so successful in the past. And the diversity of our state is I've been on the campaign trail running for governor. Um, the uh, I've intentionally I've gone out of my way to to reach out to communities that um, that a lot of times Republicans don't show up at. And, and what I find, there's a ton of shared values in entrepreneurship and, and, and innovation and, and hard work and, and the importance of family. And I mean, there's, so, there's just so much that, that unites us. The, um, but attraction of talent and being a welcoming place is really important. And, uh, and, and, and we have to work hard. I think it would be very intentional about, uh, about separating out a debate around illegal immigration and legal immigration. Legal immigration is such an important cornerstone of Michigan, and uh, and it's something that I, I think that across the political spectrum you can get people to really rally around. And uh, and and the thing is, you know, recruitment of people from around the world. I mean, heck, we can do it without even leaving Michigan because we have these world class universities that attract in talent from all over the world. So that's I. So I think that we have all the tools. The Office of of New Americans was established to. Um, as a, as a as a way to help um, to to attract that talent, you know. Ultimately, though, we do need federal immigration reform. It's something that we there's only so much progress you can make at the state level on these issues, and uh, at the at, and we hear about it from from industry and workforce shortages all across our our state and practically every industry where they're saying we just can't find enough people to fill all these jobs. And uh, in fact, I think on mitalent.org, we have about 110 open, 110,000 open jobs right now. And, uh, and so workforce development, training, connecting people that are left out to those jobs, you know, it's a great opportunity to leverage the job growth to help people, but it's also a great opportunity to attract people in. But, we are, but I want to point out that we are, that has started. I mean, the population decline, um, it's stabilized and now we're, we're growing, but on the inbound migration, of uh, of uh, college graduates, the net inbound migration into Michigan, we used to be 51st behind 49 states and the District of Columbia. Now we're 12th in America. We're number one in the in the Midwest three years in a row, and it's uh, Chicago and Illinois where we lost a whole generation of kids to. They're last now. They're literally 51st, and uh, and there's an inverse relationship there. I mean, we're getting our kids back from Chicago. Do you think refugees should be a part of this plan? Well, oh, people people well. that are seeking um, uh, seeking help from uh, from uh, religious persecution, I think that this is a that this is a really important aspect of uh, of, of of America and what we've what we have represented in the past. And so, I, I do think that we need to be we have to be careful, of course, in the in the process. But that is something that we need to be uh, that we need to remain open to. Um, I, I want to point out, though, that that we also you know the way that this the way that immigration happens in uh, uh, today you know i'm afraid that we set other countries though up for failure that as as we kind of take the the best and the brightest people from other areas um the the ones who would really um you know physicians and and civil engineers and th you know people that you really need to have a a, a healthy thriving community when when they're removed from uh, from from another place, then the ability of that place to be a thriving, functional, growing place is is diminished. And so uh, that's why I, I I just think we need to uh, again. I'm not running for Congress, or United States Senate, and or, or President of the United States or anything of that nature. But in this entire debate, I I think that we need to do uh, we need to really focus when there's a lot of people that want to come here because there's something bad happening in the world to the extent that we can make that something bad fix the something bad so that they don't have to leave um, I mean who wants to leave home I mean that's the that's the the part of this equation that I think needs to be in that conversation well some people are forced to flee but I, I did want to ask you if you would support the EB5 visa program 
Yeah. Um, well, it, again, that's a, a, a federal issue. So, yeah. you know, supporting it or not supporting it is just a, a, an opinion as opposed to a, a policy. But the EB-5 program has been used in this state to right. uh, to create entrepreneurship and job growth opportunities in the past. The key is we, you know, we just we have, of course, and I feel like we always have to qualify this. You have to be careful. Right. In everything that we do, we have to be careful because the world has become a very dangerous place. And as long as we have the, the proper processes in place for uh, for how people enter into this country and our assurance that people have the best interests in, in mind, then um, then I think that it's a great opportunity for growth and making our community stronger. Mm -hmm.